Man, what's going on guys? Welcome to episode 99 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want and we try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. So there's two things going on this month. One is that we're one episode away from episode 100 to which the curtain will be finally pulled back on what exactly I'm going to do for that. The other is that it's November and if you like gaming on YouTube, you probably know that someone established a Zelda month in the month of November. And I got to admit, I kind of got into the spirit of the season. So I decided to get peanut butter gamer on this episode so look forward to hearing from him but you know what you don't want to hear me doing an intro for 10 minutes so how about we get ourselves started I knew this was going to be a great episode because right at the start you had something going on. It was the intro title screen of the game. And let me tell you, there's a lot of things done differently here than when you actually start playing. For example, that tunnel that Link goes through at the start, that's handled in a really funny way. The quote unquote tunnel is its own room. And as for that environment, yeah, it just keeps traveling backwards while the train remains in place. And then as for the track itself, for whatever reason the environment underneath the track travels way further down than the player would ever be meant to see. And also includes includes a second track underneath the track that I believe is stored there after the cave scene. Why this happens, I have no idea because like I said on the overworld map of the game, none of this happens. And when you do a zoom out of this entire area, you can see that the train in fact is not traveling at all. Instead it's an optical illusion, animating the textures all around it to give the perception of movement. <laughs> Having a locked camera angle is kind of a funny thing in games because with that limitation to the player, developers have the relief of not creating detail to the environments that the player can't turn the camera to see. However, in some cases you can see areas where the developer overextended themselves. Like for example, here in Zelda's room you can see the animated sky that peeks through the windows is absolutely massive when you pan the camera out. This was likely to allow the dialogue camera to move in any direction without accidentally seeing the void, but judging by the size and details of the moving sky you don't get to see, the developers took absolutely no chance in making that mistake. And here's a little bonus thing for you, in the same room during a cutscene, Link changes out of his conductor clothing into his hero clothing. Naturally, the normal game camera pans away, but if you were to keep the camera focused on Link, you'd see that the transformation is instantaneous. Alright, now I gotta tell you a bit of a story. So, those of you who played the game may remember a character named Ferris, who you had to find on the overworld map and pull over and talk to him. And when you talk to him, Link would get out of the train and have a little bit of a chat. Now, when you do that, the game loads a very special room that is exclusive to Ferris. Now, when I checked this the first time, this is what it looked like. It was just one giant open space and just about anything that was outside of the original camera view didn't really exist unless you count the platform that all of this takes place on. That's when Super Stario mentioned to me that there was a room in which there are six Ferrises and three of them are attached to different areas of the game, all loaded Link in the same room, just different coordinates inside of the room. Now, I thought that was really cool, but when I checked initially, it didn't show up. It looked, again, like this. But he assured me that if I could find one of these other areas, this special room that he pulled up would exist. And boy, am I glad that I took his advice and checked, because it's true. Certain encounters with Ferris will load this room with six Ferrises, which is one of the funniest things I've ever presented on this show. And as for the other three Ferrises, they have no dialogue whatsoever. However, so if you were expecting some special secret message, unfortunately that is not the case. I was so surprised by this discovery that I honestly found it by accident. I nudged the camera controls while doing the opening cutscene for the game, which normally only has 2D images in it. However, the images on the bottom screen still has a 3D plane behind those textures. And by moving the camera, we can see what's beyond those 2D images. And what you'll find is three characters that are in the next cutscene in a T-pose. And those three characters that you're looking at are Alfonso, Nico and Link. Now that might be a little hard to decipher because they're all stored in the same position. However, if you look at it hard enough, you can see all three. Also in Nico's room is something left behind by the developers. A lot of the textures that you see normally are all stored on one sheet and the bed model shows the rest of that texture on the back end that's facing away from the camera. Oh, 
A lot like Sheik in the Ocarina of Time episode of Boundary Break, Byron's face is detailed underneath his mask. And it's even less likely than with Sheik that the player would ever get a glimpse of it. Because unlike Sheik, where the texture of the mask and the face has a little bit of distance apart, Byron's mask goes through his face, completely covering any chance of seeing details that are, in fact, there, like his mouth and nose. So one of the greatest challenges to this episode was that there was culling and a lot of it. Basically everything outside of the in-game camera gets culled out except for the environment itself, which thankfully there was a solution to. Super Stario made a in-game camera for the Spirit Tracks episode. Now it was a little bit difficult to control so I am glad that we have the other camera. However, Super Stario's camera allows us to have environments that go from this to this. And I am absolutely ecstatic to be able to show that to you. However, that's not the same case for the overworld map. Unfortunately, it's not culling that causes things to go in and out of this area. Instead, objects are loading in real time. And so whether we have Super Stario's camera or the one that I've been using primarily for this episode, the overworld's going to look a little bit barren. But as a consolation, here's a low poly version of Link that is exclusive to the overworld. <laughs> All right, so I had to combine all these together because if I didn't, it would just look like padding in the episode because so many of them feel the same. And that's, of course, what's going on with Link in cutscenes outside the boundaries. And man, there are a lot of good ones. The one you just saw with Alfonso is just the tip of the iceberg. All right, so there's one where Link is reaching out to Zelda. And the only reason I can think of is that they had to move his head to move it out of the way of the camera view, but his head is just straight up twisted backwards. And then there's this one where Burn just smacks Link and uh, outside the boundaries, he's just kind of floating in the air for a good solid second. It's great. But one thing that's really cool is something that was cut. See, in this one little scene, there's an intentional expression from Link, but the camera's never focused on him, so the players completely miss out on it. Alright, you want some more zoom outs? I can give you some more zoom outs, why not? Here's a zoom out of Anuki Village, which is in the Snow Realm, and I really like the feel of these areas when they're zoomed out. It reminds me of like a Pokemon map or something. And in a certain cutscene inside of Zelda's bedroom, you could see that for whatever reason, sometimes the developers used a far more detailed version of the outdoors, even more detailed than what PBG was showing just a second ago. This version is used after Zelda is captured as well as at the very end of the game. And over here is a boss room and what's really weird about this is that despite the fact that the camera never ever goes outside of the boundaries to show you any of this, the boss room sits on top of a tower that's resting on top of a roof that is housed inside of an entire outdoor area. And to bookend this segment of zoom outs, why don't we give you a zoom out of Castletown. A lot of people wanted to know if Chancellor Cole had his horns underneath his hats before the scene with the big reveal. Well, not only are his horns always underneath, but there's also details to the horn inside of his head that are unique to these ends alone. I love that there's something for me to show you with Beetle, because what's a Wind Waker style game without a Beetle cameo? But anyways, taking the camera inside of his head shows you that there's a lot of texture underneath. Now what this is supposed to be is a hairline texture. It allows the hair to move around freely while the head isn't directly connected, but you end up seeing some extra scalp underneath the hair. However, you don't see this a lot in spirit tracks for one thing, and the other thing is, well, the length in which the developers made his uh, quote unquote hairline is just astronomical. It's almost like he could put a whole nother face in there. Here's two things to look at on the spirit tracks. One is the Skulltula, because you don't get a great look at where it goes when it flies back up into wherever it came from. It's kind of funny because on the last few frames of its animation, it just kind of goes fully horizontal, which that is not behavior I've ever seen from a hanging spider in a video game before. Also, all the rocks and trees are supposed to follow the in-game camera. This is in the pursuit of trying to make 2D objects look 3D, pretty much. Um, but with the camera that is not Super Stario's, the trees remain locked on what they think is the in-game camera, and you can see that they're just hauntingly staring at Link at all times. Be careful, the trees are watching you. All 
Alright, now that we're at the end of the game, we can start talking about some of the things that are in the ending cinematics. There's this one scene where Zelda reunites with her body. Now, if you were to take the camera out during this scene, you can see that that black that it fades to is actually just a single texture that doesn't even wrap around the entire environment just enough to cover up all the dimensions of the camera shot. Also in the same scene where Link goes to catch Zelda, Zelda is supposed to land on top of Link off camera. However, the way this looks is a little interesting. It's uh, he falls through the ground, which hashtag not interesting to a game dev, I suppose. But what's really, really odd here is that his expression changes. I don't know why. Obviously no one would be able to see that. And uh, obviously he's not positioned in a way in which you should be able to see that. And lastly, I wanted to bookend this segment by showing you Link and Zelda holding hands. And by their powers combined, they make a T-pose. Sort of. Link's, um, Link needs to lift his arm up just a little bit more there. And, uh, yeah. Still beautiful, though. Well, it looks like she says there's nowhere to be found, so I guess you guys are stuck with me on the outro. Thanks so much for having me on. I'm a big fan of Boundary Break. I do a lot of videos on my channel where I hack games, so YouTube would always recommend me similar types of videos. Boundary Break was always one of the ones I saw. Eventually, I decided to click on it, and uh, I've been a subscriber ever since. At least, I think I'm subscribed. I never use my subscription page anymore. <laughs> Whether you're a fan of Boundary Break or you are new to the channel, make sure you check out the next episode. It is episode 100. It's super special. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Mostly because I don't know. She says, well, not tell me what it is. Otherwise, I would tell you. I would just would. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, you can check it out. I assume it's in the link or something like that. Uh, I do a lot of hacking videos, as I mentioned. And uh, maybe we've got one of them there for you to click on. Uh, Breath of the Wild, maybe. Because it is Zelda Month. And, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks to She Says for, for participating in Zelda Month. It really, it really is appreciated. And I'm just going to go ahead and end this like I usually end my videos. So how about that? 